Red Rocker Sammy Hagar here. Welcome to another Rock and Roll Road Trip. Now we are on Colfax Avenue in Denver, Colorado. I'm in town playing Fiddler's Green. Nickelback's here playing Red Rocks. We're here at Twist and Shout Record Store, and I'm gonna go interview Chad. We're gonna jam, and uh, we're gonna find out what he's all about. Why the hell they put us in the same town the same night? If it wasn't for that, we'd be playing together, but instead we're gonna go play together in here. And uh, yeah, welcome to another Rock and Roll Road Trip. Chad, here we are. Let's go look at some records. See, okay. Yeah, because I'm, I'm really curious, as you walk through here, what you will, like, say, oh, I love this album, or, oh, I hated these guys, or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, it's all legal, right? <laughs> hey, they well, say things like that about us. We can say it about them yeah, if we want. Yeah. I mean, you I know. I think I get a hall pass. Yeah. <laughs> what I gotta, else we got? I don't know. Let's look around here. Okay. Here's what I got to ask you. Here's the big question. What do we got? Credence. Oh, nice. The reason I got to ask you this, yep. don't you think that, that uh, Nickelback's similar to Creedence? I mean, we do Born on the Bio every you time. You and we, I do it. Yeah. Uh, we, you and we'll I We'll probably bust into it like right now, any minute now, we'll start, you know, as we're walking down the house. But uh, were you into this band? Big time. Big Huge. Time. Um, I love the way John sings. Yep. You know, he's got that, that, that high scream and you know I've tried to uh, no I've you tried sing kind of like to, that but it's your own way you're not singing like him but you're doing the same I have definitely same. tried to mimic the CCR thing Cream you're into Cream my favorite band of all time Desiree really? really Gears I did not know that that I was played, a... see this is for me I played every solo that Eric played on this album I could play every one of them note for note nice yeah so yeah. Beatles who else who else really influenced you Beatles the writer um my mother just I mean, constantly had music on in the house. And my mother took me to my first Metallica concert and told me that she was just dropping Mike and I off. She came in and watched the show. And we had a Metallica poster, a big poster, hanging in our living room the entire time Mike and I were growing up. So my friends would come over and be like, Metallica. you have a Metallica poster Metallica. in your living room, like your going. mom's the coolest. So, I mean, there's just amazing records all over the place. There's my record right there in, in vinyl. Nice. I mean, well, like seeing this, See, there you that go. trips me out. Like that's trippy See, for me. See it on vinyl, why? Because you you didn't. Well, because I grew up with mostly cassettes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the '90s showed up, and then it was it was CDs, and then everything was just CDs. See, to me, the stuff on vinyl. I mean, I know it's got a sound. It's everywhere, man. It's got a sound, but I'm I'm not a freak about it. You know, I'm I'm okay with with the, you know a CDs. It's the recordings you love. It's not how they were recorded or or what they were recorded on. It's a song, not the singer. Yeah. Once again, or whatever, however you want to put that yeah. thing. Like a lot of people think it's a singer, not the song. You know, Elvis Presley could sing a bad song, man. But you give him a good song and he'd kill it. You know, it's sure. like yeah. So I, sure. I, I'm I'm all I'm all about songwriting, and you are a great songwriter. Okay. Friend. And we're gonna sit you down as well. and talk about it. Okay. We're gonna talk about it. Hey, Sammy Hagar here. Welcome back to another Rock and Roll Road Trip. And I've been walking around this record store with my good buddy Chad from Nickelback and from the planet Earth, but actually from Canada. That's on the planet Earth, isn't it, somehow? Some people think so. Canadians definitely think yeah, so. Yeah, now we're going to find out what makes you really roll, Chad. Like, you know, what is it? What, what bothers you and stuff? I mean, what bothers you in rock and roll? Like, you know, being a, being a rock star, you know, come on. We all want to be rich and famous and all this stuff. You've, you've made it, okay, oh, right? You've made it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're okay now, boy. I have so, now. So now, now this, this is the moment. Yeah. So now, okay. what? I mean, what really? What pisses you off about this industry or anything? Is it? Um, or you know, maybe nothing pisses you off. I think, I think when we all start off, you know, and and whatever it is, you start playing your drums in the garage, or you've got your, you know, your guitar in your bedroom, or whatever it is that we're doing. We always envision um, getting out there. And, 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 and playing for people and, and hitting the road and traveling the world and recording, you know. That's what you're the, doing, wait a minute. But. Oh, there's a. That's only, it <laughs> turns, out, turns out the touring and the recording is only half of the gig. The other half of the gig is to impress. Oh. You know, so when you're getting up at six o'clock in the morning and you, you know, you, you, you can't, you know, you, you've had a few beers after the last show and you got to go to a radio <laughs> station and just fumble your way through one of your songs acoustically or whatever. I mean, it's, it's, that's the stuff you don't sign up for. What inspires you to write a song? Do you just come out of the ether? Or? Um, I don't, sometimes, um, 
I'll hear someone say something, and it's it's. Uh, I know I can take what they said and turn it into like a, you know, we would call it a tagline or a hook line. Yeah. You know, and so I'll have, as we all do, we've got a thousand of those in our phone, right? How many of those you hear something and it's like, ooh. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm taking that. Um, so so there's, there's the two ways that we always start writing songs. You know, you'll have a little guitar thing and you'll have a melody or you'll have some lines in your phone. So you either come, you come at it from a, a language point or, or strictly from a music point. And it's nice when you've got a melody and you've got a little guitar riff or whatever it might be and you go through your phone and you find something in there that just works, you know, it just syncs up perfectly with what you were just doing. And those wind up being the magical ones. That's great Did that you say that because to me is what you're saying is you go by inspiration. Because a lot of your songs are written like so perfect a hit. I mean, like, you know, mm. 30 seconds in, you go to this part, and you, you know, like, you know <laughs> and, and someone told me that about mm. you, about, it's like, oh man, all his songs, he writes all these things, you know, it's like a, you know, like a machine, you know, they they go, it's like a, they go to the computer, and say, okay, it's gotta be, and, 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 and I said, no, 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 there's a lot of soulful stuff, you know, to me, in, in your songs. Well, the funny thing is, if you're gonna write a song correctly, you're supposed to, you're supposed to know what the song's gonna be about. The same way, like you wouldn't just start a movie if you were gonna if you're gonna write a script, right, or a novel or whatever it might be, and have no idea where it was where going. it was going. Yeah. You wouldn't start off with two guys are walking down <laughs> the street. That'll work in Hollywood. Hey, I got this idea. Yeah, <laughs> you would never do that. Yeah. But we write Nickelback songs like that all the time. You know, we really do. We just start off like there's just a line that starts coming out, and then it's just if we get there somehow, we bumble and bumble our way into those songs. I'm sure they sound like they were just constructed in a laboratory, but they're not. Do, do, is there places you go that inspire you to, to get, maybe pull out a good line, or does the line just come anywhere? I think it's impossible to write a, like a, a heavy rock song when the sun is shining and the, the wind is blowing through the palm trees. You know? <laughs> Well, so, no, not even song like Mas Tequila or Living on a Coastline. Or, now, <laughs> yeah, but those lifestyle songs. Lifestyle songs. Th that's, yeah, that's a lifestyle song. I mean, that's like a, so if you're going to write something heavy and gritty and dirty, and uh, uh, man, it's tough to do. And Honestly, like you, I'm sure, it's so thrilling to write a great song. Every time I write a new song, yeah. I get excited. Yeah. I, and I really, you know, going on tour, that's hard for me now, you know, going out for too long. You guys, you know, you put out a brand new record, you gotta go out and support it the world. You're a worldwide artist. It's uh, it is, it's a grind. Yeah. But I, I feel the same way when you get that little, the butterflies and, and you know you're onto something really good. Yeah, man. And then I, I get this feeling like once it starts, when you're like 90% of the way there and you keep adding a little, little thing here, a little bit of ear candy, wherever it might be, you get this, I, I get this feeling like I just can't wait to show this to the rest of the world. Yeah, I no, can't you want wait. to play it for people. You do. Song, you know, I want to be a rock star. You were pretty much well on the way um, when you wrote that song, so you kind of knew what you were Get talking there. about. Get yeah, there. yeah. Uh, you've become rich and famous, all those things you were saying, you want this, you want that, you right. got all those things. So, how's that working for you, Chad? <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? I mean, life does get easier. Um, and um, it, 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 there, there are two ways you can look at it. Um, more money, more problems. Or you can look at it as, there's another saying, um, anybody who said that uh, money can't fix everything in the world didn't have uh, two nickels to rub together. <laughs> because it does, it can fix a lot well, of problems. You, you can get a lot done and you, you can. can, yeah, you can buy a lot of things. You can get yeah. a lot, you know, you can have whatever you want and all those things, but, um, but I mean, is it what you, you thought it was going to be? Growing up, you know, um, wanting to be rich, famous rock star, is it, it, it has it uh, fulfilled the your it's, expectations? It's more or imagination. Like, I think that you think that you're going to be chumming around with rich and famous people all the time, and you're not really. I mean, what, you, you do once what do in a while. What do you call but, this? I mean, yeah, but it makes it it makes it so 
you can really hang out with your loved ones, like your your the friends that you grew up with. That's what it makes it so you can, you know, take them. You know, I've taken so many of my. You've met all my closest buddies. I mean, I've got more video. Of, my friend's doing stupid crap in, in your club <laughs> than uh, you can imagine. Club, by the way. Well, sure, yeah. I'll take it. But uh, <laughs> I love spoiling my friends. You know, I love I taking them and and, uh, and just uh, providing stuff for them that they would never, ever get to do. When did you first think you made it? How many years in? When did you say, you know what, boys, we're making it? I think when How Your Mind Me came out, that we, we started getting a taste of what that was like. You know, it was, it was um, going to... Because back in the day, the way that we would have to do it normally is like, you'd go play the 400 seat club. And if you really kicked ass, the next time you come to town, you play the 800 seat club. And then you might play the 1,000 seat really cool club. And then if you can get up to the theater, it holds 2,200, now you're making, you know, now we're really getting somewhere. Um, and that would be the grind that you would think about, right? But when your song gets there before you, and, and you Never show up. It happened to me, but it happened the, to you. I it know. happened to me, yeah. I mean, and a long way, and I'd played every club. I'd played every club in Australia. I'd played every club in Europe. We'd played them all. We, we played every single venue in every city in the world already um, before we got the hit. And, um, and then, you know, you'd show up, and it would be like, you know, you get to Wembley in, in, uh, in London, and suddenly it's like, we're not playing the Astoria anymore, boys. <laughs> you know, and uh, that's a great feeling. You know, when you when you get to uh, um, L.A. and you're not playing the Viper Room, you're playing Staples. But that's know? why you guys are good, and that's why you're such a good front man, a good performer. And I know this because you are. It's like because you paid all that dues. If you guys, these guys, they get together and the first thing they ever do is this giant hit, and then they try to chase. That them. makes it really They're tough. They're doing this their whole career, and then they have yeah. a little about three years and then bun the toilet, yeah. and they and the, they don't have a hit one year, and then they kind of go on the toilet. And they don't know how to go out and perform and make people happy. Yeah. So you should thank God for all that, dude. I, that's I, that's I, my whole claim to fame. Is absolutely. Like I, I knew how to do it before I had it. Yeah, if you can jump on stage with anybody and grab the microphone and hold your own yeah. and get in there and jam, and, and everybody knows who those people are and everybody knows who those people aren't. Yeah. And, you know, it's nice to, to have gone and, and paid those dues. It, I wouldn't want to, I would not want it, you know, the other way around. It's really been a pleasure. Buddy. I, I feel like I've, as much as we've partied, I'm just getting to really know you. Now? Wow. Believe it or not. It's the most wow. comfortable I've been around you. Because wow. we're always doing people around and we're jumping it is, up. It is. It's and usually very stressful. Trying to each other, you know, getting on stage and trying to outpiss each other. And... <laughs> we're usually sitting backstage <laughs> trying to figure out the words to a song before we get up there. And stress levels are high. It's like, what are we doing? What are we playing? Do you know this one? Do you know that one? Who knows the words of this one? We're like, well, here's that? what I want to do for this show, if you don't mind. What's that? Besides the this and that that I, that I understand, you don't you're not going for it. You want to do the this or that for me. But I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm I, okay with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm, okay I'm gonna flip that. the script. Here, I'm gonna see, turn the tables. Let's see how and, I can hold up. Yeah. Let's see. I'm with my own shit. Yeah. But uh, I, I want to do rock star. And you get two seconds with you to answer. And your I'd love to do uh, I'd love to do rock star. I have taken the reins here on Rock and Roll Road Trip, and uh, you're going to play this or that, and we're going to start off with the one that everybody asks when they play this or that. Ready? And you, you have to answer really quickly. You can't think about it. Boom. Yes, sir. Ready. Boxers or briefs? Uh, I, I roll straight. No, I don't, I don't worry either okay. way. Okay. Yeah, I'm naked. C. Commando. <laughs> <laughs> Cabo or Maui? Oh, Cabo. All right. Chicken or fish? Chicken. All right. These all came in from these people, and their names are beside them. <laughs> they, of people that ask these questions. Okay, so Kurt Torster wants to know, David Lee Roth or Gary Sharon? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's vicious. Oh, my God. Three, oh, two. I got to take the diamond. <laughs> I got to take him on this one. Gibson or Fender? <laughs> Gibson. Boom. Flip flops or sneakers? Flip flops. Okay. Which movie? E.T. or Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Oh, Close Encounters. Okay. No, no, E.T. Sorry. Damn it. See the flippy floppy That's thing not, that happens there? Little wishy 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 w
And so <laughs> I, I, I think I know which way you're going to answer this one. <laughs> Blonde or brunette? Blonde. <laughs> plugged or unplugged? Uh, plugged. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And last but not least, and this is going to be a tough one, tequila or tequila? Mesquila. <laughs> Mesquila. And that's us. M E Z Q U I L A Santo, to be exact. There you go. <laughs> nice Chad, buddy. this is awesome. Buddy. I love that.